Wake up! I'm Doug and this is the Taste and Sensibility Channel and today on coffee review number 10 we're looking at this Brazilian Peabody from Pocos de Caldas. So first I want to go into what Peabody means. It is a kind of a coffee bean where something has gone a little wrong. Let me flip over. This is a wonderful book called Coffee Obsession by Annette Maldvair. And she gives so much information about all the different little parts of where coffee comes from and how it's made. And here's a little picture of a coffee cherry with two beans inside. If one of the beans doesn't start, these are really seeds inside of fruit. So if one of the seeds doesn't start, then only one is in there and it's got all the room. It can be much more round. It doesn't, it's not gonna have a flat side. You can see from all my pictures of unroasted beans up here. So almost every bean has a flat side and a round side, like a half moon or something like that. And if the only one bean forms inside the cherry, then it gets much rounder. And as long as I got the book open to Brazil, I was going to show you where it's from, but the detail on this map is not as good because Brazil is such a large country. But you can see the coffee growing region here in the green. Here's another one over here. And this, well, you can see Rio de Janeiro, Sao Paulo, and Belo Horizonte. In between those, that's kind of a triangle. And then the, in there somewhere is the Pocos de Caldas. But I had to get another map from Google Maps. To actually show it. So Rio, Sao Paulo, and Belo Horizonte, and this little region right here, almost north of Sao, Sao Paulo, is Pocos de Caldas. So the co-op where this coffee comes from, from dozens or hundreds of growers, is from that region. And they say they have volcanic soil, so it might make a difference. So we're going to get into pouring the coffee that I just made a few minutes ago in my automatic drip coffee maker. Usually let it warm up. I usually let it cool off a little bit before I start tasting. And I'm going to do a second round today, but let me show you. I accidentally roasted my first batch very dark. So this was the accident batch. This is what I'm usually shooting for. But when I discovered it wasn't really ruined, or even burnt, it just was much deeper, darker, richer. And this coffee takes it just fine. But right now I'm doing the, working on the medium roast. Yeah, it's a light, friendly smell to it. It doesn't smell a lot like the other coffees. I'm not sure what to call it. It's caramely, nutty, very interesting. But a fairly light roast and you can tell the beans are smaller and roundish like the pea berry form is Ooh, okay hot too hot to hold okay so while i'm let, letting that cool off i'm gonna remind you to please like this video if you like all the things that you're seeing on this channel whether they be coffee or licorice or whiskey or cheese Please give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment or a question down below and subscribe to the channel. And when you click the bell, you're going to get notified every time the new videos come out right now, just on Mondays. So I'm getting maybe an earthy note. Still pretty warm. Not a lot of stuff is jumping out into my nose. So I'll start tasting. It's too hot, but there's a fruitiness of the kind I haven't had before. More of a grape, melon. Peachy mango melon, that sort of friendly, light, sweeter. family yeah that's where the fruitiness is and it's kind of sweet 
not like someone added sugar, but the sweet, at least the sweetness you would associate with that fruit. It's in there. Very nice. Not really getting cocoa, chocolate, or nuttiness or anything like that. So we're doing four South American coffees in this review, and we did Colombian last time, and going to do a couple of Brazilians. And this is a little bit different than the Colombian was. I'd say it's sweeter, the fruit has a different character. We'll see if anything else comes out as it cools off. What I've been doing on almost all of these reviews is to take some unroasted beans that I buy from a, a single supplier called Smokin' Beans, and they have connections to co-ops and uh, high quality growers around the world. So they are telling me that this is all growing at about uh, 900 meters. It's all different Brazilian Arabica cultivars. They usually give varieties, but this time they didn't. It's from the region Cocos de Caldas, as I said before, and it's all natural and or semi-washed from a farmer's co-op. So the notes here tell you that the pea berries account for 5% or less of the usual coffee crop in most places. But that they concentrate the flavor. I'm not sure that's true, but I know they do lots of sorting by size, and when you kick out the small ones, you end up with a lot of pea berries. So I buy these, I roast them myself, and I keep them around for, I only roast about half a pound or two thirds of a pound, and then I try to use them up within about three weeks or so. So I entertain myself by having three or four different coffees that I've roasted going myself. I've been roasting a little bit larger amounts for the reviews I've been doing on the coffee for these coffee videos. And my first attempt roasting this one I thought was a disaster. I tried a program I was not familiar with on my roaster and it never really gave me a first crack. So I kept going and kept going and kept going. And pretty soon there was, I was going, why is there so much smoke? Why does it smell like the house is burning down? And I realized, oh, I may have just wrecked 12 ounces of beans. And they're, they turned out really oily. They were oily in the roaster, which I don't usually see. It usually pops out a little bit later. So these are dark, shiny surface, oily. And we'll be tasting this a little bit later. But it's, uh, kind of a, it's a totally different profile. They usually give recommended roast levels and they say light to dark on this label. Okay, here's their other notes. Hazelnut, orange, chocolate, brown sugar. Pfft. Not like anything I said. But uh, they say these beans work out with light to dark roasts. So I did medium. We're going to be doing dark in a little bit. Oh, much cooler. There's a faint earthy cocoa-y type note there. I, I sure wouldn't call it chocolate, it's not strong. Oh man, I always run out just as it's getting interesting. I need to talk while it's cooling and then drink. So I use the same recipe for all these different things. So I've got two different coffees, two different coffee preps for my automatic drip maker here, but I always use filter water, I always weigh out the same amounts. Uh, the recipes for multiple preps and small amounts like this, it's usually 30 grams of the beans to 480 grams of water. And it's filtered water, tap water from this area. So this is cooler. Oh, a little deeper, richer. Still got the fruity notes, but they've uh, shifted a little bit darker, like a peach or a plum. So it has the same character as the melon, peach, mango type thing, but some of the flavors have shifted. 
and the earthy note is growing and darkening into a chocolatey type thing. Mm, so that's good and interesting and uh, fairly deep and rich and complex for such a uh, light roast medium and Peabody. I don't know what all the combinations are. I'm, I'm still learning all this stuff myself and messing up all the time. So that is good and significantly different than other ones, even though the notes sound similar. And this is a nice clear cup having gone through a paper filter. But I'm going to do my usual thing of adding a little milk and seeing if I get anything other anything other than caramely chocolate milk. So again, an exquisite butterscotchy, caramely, chocolatey milk type thing where it's not, no longer has deep, dark, rich, earthy notes associated with the cocoa, but some butter fat has gone in and made it sweeter and more desserty. There's sugar in this half and half. There's butter fat in this half and half. That makes it into a dessert. Blonde brownies, caramely something or other. Just excellent. As I say, I don't do it every day, but I praise it once a week when I'm tasting this. Okay, so I think we're done with the medium roast. Now we're going to take a shot at the darker stuff which was first an accident and I was distraught and I was thinking I wrecked 12 ounces of this coffee that came halfway around the world from the southern hemisphere. Let's see how hot this is. This was made in the drip coffee maker a little bit before this one was and then put into this travel mug so it could have cooled off quite a bit. I had hot water in it to warm it up first. Wow, nose is much deeper, richer, not quite burnt, but in that direction. It's definitely facing a darker, richer direction. Yeah, cool enough to drink. It is deeper and richer on the nose darker but I'm not sure what it is that's dark I don't have a it's not like burning fruit it's not like burning earth cocoa leather I don't have notes don't have words so maybe deep dark brown sugar molasses without sulfur, without a lot of sweetness, without the sugar, <laughs> which I don't know if that makes sense. But it's got those deep, dark, rich notes. There's still a remnant of a fruitiness, like a plum. And that's good and a, a good combination. And down below, uh, Something is earthy about it. Maybe even more earthy. But it doesn't quite suggest a cocoa or chocolate. So I was shocked that I could drink this stuff, that it didn't taste burnt, that it didn't taste bitter. So I'm learning every time I do something. And this is just wonderful. So you can go all the way dark. You can probably go a little bit more before you uh, hit some kind of limits. At some point it will taste burnt and dark and bitter. But my extraction process of my automatic drip maker does not pull out too much bitter or any bitter that I can tell. That's just wonderful. So I'm still testing limits all the time, even if by accident. So a little cream in the sky. I think it's going to give me a little different experience than the other ones have. 
Oh, we'll see. Just a guess. Can I guess anything else correctly? So it's, still, it's got the same caramely chocolate milk type nose. All the notes are still there, like the lighter roasts have, but they're all, it's much more integrated into a single unit. I can sort of, when I'm usually drinking these, I, there's a butterscotch corner, there's a caramel corner, there's a chocolate milk corner, and I can move around between them and go, oh, I like this part, and then I like this part, and I like this part, and they're separate things. Here, they're not separate. They're, it's all one thing in the middle. <laughs> which is an odd way of describing it, but that's that's what I'm getting on my palate. So, wow. It does not taste dark. It does not taste over-roasted. It does not taste burnt. Even though looking at the beans, I go, oh, I would worry about that. So, I'm going to have fun drinking the rest of this darker roast coffee. I still got a little bit of the sweet, sweet character of it and uh, got some more interesting darker notes out of the roast. So the second topic today is going to be on brewing coffee with an aero press, which looks like a big syringe. And it presses the coffee, the coffee that has been brewing with the grounds through a filter or a mesh screen into your cup or receptacle. So probably good for travel, but uh, limited size or limited applications. So today I'm going to show you a couple different ways to make coffee using an AeroPress, which is this plunger and barrel system where you have a filter holder, put a paper filter in, attach it to the barrel, put in your coffee and water mixture into here, Sometimes it's straight up, sometimes it's this way, sometimes it's inverted. And then after the right amount of time, you press this through and it compresses all the uh, coffee down at one end and the coffee, the brewed coffee is expressed out into a cup or vessel. So it comes with a little funnel, stirrers, scoop, and some filters all part of the package and when I bought mine from Cafeology, and I'll put a link down below, I got this little extra mesh filter. I don't know if I ordered it or if they just threw it in as a freebie, but this is the way to go for the most part. So I'll do one with that. So like I said, I'm going to show you a couple different ways. First one is from Tim Wendelbow, the mesh filter. Part of this and then 14 grams of fine ground coffee so I've got 15 grams here I just want to get most of it in okay, I think I have a ground left behind and there is 14 so that's what I'm shooting for now the water's about to be ready, I hear. Okay, so I'm going to set this on top of the cup. I'm going to add 200 grams of water, all in one go, and stir it and set a timer for one minute. Uh-oh. Way too much. So this sort of thing happens to me all the time with the non-inverted methods where there's lots of water down here. 
I don't think they intended that. But anyway, I don't think I don't think this cup will hold the rest of it. But here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and press it on down. Get rid of the air so there's an air gap between the top of the coffee brewed liquid and the plunger. Get the nice even pressure, it's pushing the coffee and grounds and plunger. And now it's just a bed of white coffee grounds with the air going through. So I'm going to pour this thing back in and give it a taste. It's deep and rich smelling. It's a tad weaker than what I made in the automatic drip. This is the same Brazil pea potty. But it's something sweeter about it. Wow, I like it. Yeah, I'm definitely going to finish this cup. Just not on camera. Now we're going to do another method that uses the inverted way. Uses the whole thing, uses the whole contraption in an inverted position. And this is an award-winning method for AeroPress brewing from 2019. She was the world champion AeroPress brewer. And uh, Windeline Van Boonick from the Netherlands was the winner and came up with this. So let me find the pieces. So I retrieved my metal filter from over there. And I'm going to put this in the holder, but not on the apparatus. Now I'm going to put this in only to the four or so. And then turn it upside down so the plunger's on the bottom and the barrel's on the top. And I'm going to add, using the funnel, 30 grams, very lavish, extravagant method, of coarse ground coffee. And the scale says 30, just like I weighed it. So there's that. Then you add 100 grams of water. And it's not in my kettle, really. It's in the electric kettle, not in the pourer. I'm going to put lots in here. So I'm in 100 grams now, 120 grams later after brewing. So it's a make a concentrate and dilute it down kind of method. Tear it again after my 30 grams of coffee. I'm going to add 100 grams of water. And give it a stir. That's all it holds. Oop, too much. So 30 grams of coffee. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 19, 20. There's actually 110 grams of water in there, and I give it 20 stirs, and I'm going to start a timer for 40 seconds. I'm going to put the filter holder back on, and vent. Oh, I don't have a lot of air to vent. Very little vapor space there so that's pretty close I got 13 seconds left on my timer I'm gonna invert this and plunge all the way down I don't need you. I 
I see them pressure. I'm not trying to go fast. I hear air. Air bubbles are fizzing. I'm not going to press real hard once I get down to just grounds. Okay. I think I'm done. Oh, I'm not sure. Yeah, it's pretty hard to press now. So, next step add 120 grams of hot water. Because you have made a concentrate. I'm only going to add 110 because I went over the first time. Looks dark. I'm gonna pour it in here so you can see it. Then so I can spill it. So it's muddy because it went through the metal fish metal mesh filter. Again, sweeter but weaker. Perceptibly weaker than my automatic drip and sweeter. Coarse grind does not over extract. And two different times of uh, doing, doing the AeroPress gave me sweeter coffee than the automatic drip did. So one was coarse, one was fine. One had a longer time in the press inside the barrel brewing than the other one did. And one made it concentrate and one made it something that you drink directly. So I'm liking the results. So if you're traveling, this is a very sturdy, handy thing to take along where you take little paper filters or the metal mesh filter and a couple things, a way to, if you end up with a way to heat water in your room and a manual grinder, you'll be ready to go. So that's pretty cool. So let me remind you to give this video a thumbs up if you like what you're seeing here. Leave a comment or a question down below and subscribe to the channel and click the bell to get notified. So stay awake and uh, cheers.